Hi everyone and welcome to my place. I'm here today to help those crafters who don't know very much about using a sewing machine, but once you've gone through all the lessons and the easy how-to, you will be on the road to creating all sorts of magicness. So today what I want to do, a couple of little easy sewing, another lo lovely easy sewing project is, I bought this mat at my supermarket the other day. It's just one of those quick, those inexpensive little door mats that you can, I don't know, it was a couple of bucks, and I looked at it and thought, what could I do with that? And then I had a brainwave. This is really strong, and this is really sturdy. I will show you how to turn this into a sturdy carry bag. So pretty much you just need your mat. Um, I don't, they, I don't know, even if you don't have any access to this, you could get some canvas or perhaps you could just get, um, I don't know, you'll find something, some tapestry or, or an old sack would even do. It's got a little bit of fringing down there, but that's okay for me, I can work with that. Plus you need two webbing belts. I picked those up for a dollar each, so I thought that that was a good thing. And the texture of that with the texture of this, I thought would be quite nice enough. It's good enough to hold up my pants. It's good enough to hold up the weight that I'll possibly be putting into it. So you need two of those. So we'll put those to one side. You need your sewing machine threaded up with matching threads, but somebody passed the comment the other day that they couldn't see what I was doing, so I've got black thread to show you. It's just a matter of bringing, folding it in half and bringing your edges together and then just running down the side with pins, and you're probably thinking, oh, I don't need to put pins in it, but trust me, you new beginners out there, Pins will be your best friend. And it, by pinning it, it just means that nothing is going to move as I am busy whizzing down there on my sewing machine. So take those all the way down. I'm only gonna put four into there because that'll do for what I'm gonna do today. Put that into there with glasses on. Sewing machine is all threaded up. I've got my scissors, I've got my glasses, the sewing machine is on. Let us proceed. Okay, now because it's a little bit thicker in through there, you're going to have to be very careful and you've got that little fringe in there, you need to make sure that that fringing is all out of the way and it's not tucked in and, and also like mucky as it is as it appears there. Just make sure that they're all tufted out. Take it over to your machine. I'm setting, oh gosh, I just sat down, the chair moved. Oh, I'm setting my a th a length of my stitch to about three and very carefully, because it's quite thick, I'm going to have to be quite gentle about getting the, the foot and the fabric underneath. Right, from there, it's just a matter of, make sure your foot's down, and you might just have to give it just a gentle little pull at this stage, bring your pins close to you so that you're not reaching all over the place. And I'm doing about a half inch seam all the way down there. Now you don't want to go too fast, and as I have said in my previous lessons, when you get to the pin, Stop, take the pin out. Don't go over the pin because you might not be able to see this, but I'll just put that down there. This is what happens when you run over the pin. Not only do you muck up your pin, but you can also break your needle by going over that. And the sewing needle is not meant to go through to go through metal. So best to just take your time and to just take that out. And if the other thing that's really good with this, because it's got that little edging there, it's quite easy for me to just put my little foot, the other side of my foot against that. And that gives me a nice guide in which to sew to. And you can see there how, um, by using the darker thread, you can see how I've got the same length of seam all the way down. And I think that that's an important thing to be talking about right now, that when you are, whatever seam you do, whether you do it half an inch, two thirds of an inch, an inch, a centimetre, two centimetres, three centimetres, when it comes to putting the whole thing together, or especially if you're sewing a frog, all your seams need to be exactly that same measurement. Otherwise, you're gonna find that one bit's gonna to be too big to put in with the other bit as the jigsaw puzzle unfolds. Okay, so there's another pin. Oops, 
Come on. I don't know what's wrong with me today on the sewing machine. Going all the way down to the end. There's another pin. Stop. Take that pin out. Now take it almost to the end and then just backstitch through a couple of times to make sure that you have got that seam secured. As I've said on numerous occasions, cut off all of your threads as you go so that you don't, you're not left with, stri with, stri with little bits of thread all over the place. Now when you come to the other side, just a little bit of a chat now. Don't turn it around and think, oh, well, I'll just whiz down there because what can happen is the fabric, even though you've pinned it, it might just move out of place. So what I suggest you do is just transfer those pins over to the other side so that all your seams are running from the top down just to make sure, as I said, that everything all ends up nice and neat and even so that now by doing this I'm starting as I said I'm starting at the top and going down which is going to mean that they are going to be exactly the same as over this side right taking it back to your machine lifting your foot making sure that all of your little tufty bits are out of the way and because that is and these little threads here your bobbin and your 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 um your bobbin which is underneath and the spool at the top just pull those out of the way so that it, like, and what's it what's a few extra inches at this end that's what I say just to make sure that those threads are out of the way so that when you go to start sewing everything is all neat and tidy right bringing that to there it's the same seam length as I had over the other side drop your needle down drop your foot down so when I talk about dropping the needle down I mean like winding it right through to the other side and it's just slowly starting off do a few a centimeter or so and then take that back because you want you don't want that to be unraveling in any way and then just following in that little wee that little wee rate that little bit down there where I've got that edge there that will just make sure that both of my seams end up being exactly the same width there's another pin stop take the pin out and I'm just sort of like giving it a little tug because it's quite thick I'm just giving it a little helping hand as it runs through and I run down the edge of my seam and then that's my last seam so go to within a few millimeters go stitch up back stitch just to make that nice and strong so that it's not going to pull away get rid of those threads there because we don't want those right the next thing to do is because we've got that nice edging there I think that as a bag that would possibly annoy me so what I suggest you do is you can either leave that edge like it is there and then just fold this over because that raw edge I find that raw edge visually quite nice to me but if you wanted to you could just turn the whole thing in so that you've got a nice seam which I'll do now just to show you if you if you wanted to you could do this and usually I would clip off those edges to make them as I've shown you before you know clip into that edge too so that when you pushed it out you've got a nice edge there but I think that because this could fray I'm not going to do that so there's the bag turned inside out and now if you do that you're going to have either way you're still going to have that unless there's other ways that you can attend to that that little raw edge there but for now I'm not going to worry about that okay because you could sew up to the no we won't do that just at this stage okay so turn over that hem so you've got that nice bit of fringing coming down then getting your belt and I really liked the that lovely shaping on there so I'm going to keep that there and it's now just a matter of and I'll bring that down so that I've got a good cup of centimeters down pin that across there 
pin that across to there and now this is when you're going to have to make sure that you get this other this other strap going the right way because if you get it like that that could be not very nice and sit nicely when you're finished so just make sure that when you're turning it over that you've got that loop runs neatly across bring that to there and then I'll have the same length bring that to there and that to there and making sure that you've got the same length there and there so you can either visually do it or get the uh, measuring tape or a ruler to just measure that from there to there and from there to there is the same now trans turning that over and on this side I've got that little loopy thing so I'm going to put the loopy thing on this side and I've already got my template to cover to make sure that my straps are even and bringing that down about the, and I think that that's about the right length but we will check before we do any further sewing that goes down to there and then making sure that that is exactly the same as what it is on the other side bringing that down and if you are a bit concerned just get your measuring tape and measure that that is the same as that side over there and then we're just going to do the same here pin that to there and that to there and then just do another little check to make sure because there's nothing worse than having one handle longer than the other so making sure that they are balanced and are the same and now it's just a matter of going to your machine pulling those threads both those threads out and this time what we're going to do is I'm going to push that down into there make sure that there's nothing stuck underneath Hold on, I need to get my chair sorted out because I'm just slipping all over the place here whoops put the foot down and then very carefully stitch across to there lift the take the needle down into the fabric lift that up this is when it's going to get just a little bit sort of um, messy for a moment making sure that those little threads are all lying down and oops hold on hold on I've made a mistake I've made a mistake go further oops now see what happened because I didn't have that down now that could just cause a problem we're not sure at this stage no we're right take that to there then turn that around and then following that line down to that pin pull that pin out put the needle down turn it around and you'll see I've got all this hunky dunkiness here look at all that hunkiness make sure that everything is out of the way whoops now see how it went ee, like that the reason it did that is because there was too much weight and I just had to let off a little bit of pressure so just to adjust when your machine does that you just have to stop for a minute and just whoa give the machine a little bit of a helping hand the, neat, the threads down pushing that through to there oh we're nearly at the other end making sure that there's nothing caught underneath and then just whizzing up there and then back stitching so that that is firmly in place and because we are going to be carrying a bit of weight in here what I like to do is to go over that that top seam another time lifting all that up releasing the wheel and then it's just a matter of cutting off your threads going inside cutting those threads off because we don't as I said we want to be neat and tidy as we go here whoops there it is whoops and then there's another one there too right there we are so let me just show you what we've just achieved so I've done, see with the black there, I've gone down one, across, down, across, up, and then I've gone across there again, just to make sure that that is really strong and sturdy. Now I'll show you that just one more time, because this time we're going to have that extra bit of buckle there, and trust me, that's metal inside there, and it's not going to do anything. So taking your threads out again, 
take those out of the way, bring this over to here, put that on the top. So I've come down from where the seam is, I've, my seam here is about the same as what I did for along the sides there when I did those side seams. Okay, so making sure that that matches up again, put your foot down, sorry, take your needle through, lower your foot, and then it's just a matter of, I'll just back stitch that, just a matter of running on a straight line across there until you're almost at the edge, turning that around, making sure that everything is out of the way, lower your foot again, give it, you just help the wheel along, make sure that all of these bits here, all your fringing is all neat and tidy and out of the way, go to that point there, bring that down and the other reason why I'm doing it this way see this is this is what I mean by you get all this hunky mess in the road so you just have to be like really patient for a minute and then just bring all those bits across take that through to there pushing to almost to the edge again turning that around and then pushing all of this around whoops without moving the sewing machine off making sure just feel with your hand that you haven't got anything from the other side in the road and then whiz up to meet where you started and while I'm here I'll just cut those extra little threads off to there and then stopping just on the line lifting that up putting that down, making sure that that's not caught, and then just sewing through to the other side, back stitching, and there you have two handles on, and yes, you're gonna have to do it four times, but by the time you've done it two more times, you'll be loving yourself that you have achieved something that looks visually very, very nice. I've just gotta sew those ones in, which I'll do. Now you could, if you wanted to, have sewn this around, sewn the, the flap down, but what you'll find is because that there is so thick and clunky, you might find you have trouble just getting your sewing machine over there. So when in doubt, just don't even do it. You could um, slip stitch that down if you wanted to. And where those little edges are, all sort of thick, just get your, your point of your scissors into there and then just sort of like push those through as much see how that's all sort of like a bit thick just go in there ever so quietly and then just make those put those down so there we have ta -da, a really nice bag I'll sew those down after we don't need to be mucking around doing that now but there's a really nice strong sturdy bag going to the beach putting the kids books in carry I don't know whatever you need to do when you go to the supermarket and the other thing is that because it's fabric you can just throw it into the washing machine let it dry and you are ready to go and the other thing that I'm thinking is how cool and groovy is that as a very nice gift to give to somebody to be able to say, I made this for you. It does make you feel just a little bit proud. Happy sewing, everybody. Persevere. You saw that it was a bit fiddly for me turning it around, but that's just how it sometimes is. Hope you've enjoyed that and that your sewing skills are really reaching new levels of expertise. Thanks for watching and I will see you again another day.